Welcome to the Phenomenological Alliance channel. In this video, we will discuss the next question that phenomenology problematizes in the field of natural sciences, namely the problem of identity of phenomena. The conviction that light and heat are identical phenomena has a long history since they often appear together. As early as Newton's experiment, it was observed that the thermal effect near the red part of the spectrum is more pronounced than in the blue part. Moreover, the thermal effect also exists outside the red part of the spectrum. Hence, during the 18th century, thermal radiation was often referred to as invisible light. After the scientific community accepted that light is of electromagnetic nature, it was easily accepted that infrared radiation is also electromagnetic radiation with lower frequencies than visible light. Moreover, based on ancient models about the existence of seven celestial spheres, all radiations are classified into seven categories of electromagnetic radiation. Instead of speculation, let's dive into observation. If we analyze the solar spectrum radiation, we may question the exact location of infrared rays. They exist below the visible part of the spectrum, but they also exist in the visible part because sunlight warms up. How exactly does the way of infrared radiation differ from the ray of the visible spectrum? For example, the ray of 900 nanometers only warms up, while the ray of 700 nanometers both warms up and is visible. If the visible part of the spectrum also shows the thermal effect, then why don't we see that the oven is warm, but instead we need to examine the phenomenon with our hands? Let's consider if the thermal effect can be completely separated from the visual effect. Is there a light that is not warm? Yes, the light of fireflies or any fluorescent light does not warm up. Is there a heat source that is not visible? Of course, warm bodies in dark are normally invisible, except if they are glowing. We can repeat such perceptions using an experiment. The experiment demonstrates that the illuminating effect occurs independently of the warming effect. Let's also consider whether the thermal effect can be completely separated from the phenomenon of electromagnetic waves. Yes, because Electromagnetic waves do not show a thermal effect. A grounded metal stove still heats up, even though the electromagnetic radiation is disabled by earthing. Man perceives the world through the senses of sight and heat, grasping distinct aspects of reality. Asserting that light and heat are forms of electromagnetism is possible, but only by a denial of reality. Phenomenology explores the question of identity, both in general and concerning specific phenomena. Mathematical identity is a relatively simple logical problem. For example, the commutative law states that A plus B equals B plus A and similar. On contrary, the problem of the identity of phenomena is a very complex issue. External phenomena often occur simultaneously. For instance, lightning is usually accompanied by thunder, but are lightning and thunder the same phenomena just because they often occur at the same time? In general, when two phenomena are considered identical, when is it about the same phenomenon? Different phenomena can have common properties. A kilogram of feathers and a kilogram of stones are not the same phenomena, 
although they quantitatively have the same weight. Similarly, grass and cucumber share the same color quality, but they are not identical phenomena. From these examples, we conclude that neither quantitative nor qualitative identity can determine whether two phenomena are identical. Although the question of the identity of phenomena is complex, it can be asserted with certainty that if phenomena appear separately and independently, then these phenomena are not the same. When one realizes that heat, light, and radio waves occur separately and independently, one concludes that they should not be interpreted as identical phenomena, but as separate phenomena. By accepting that the theory of the electromagnetic nature of light can be questioned, we come to the point where we can ask ourselves whether light is a wave at all.